get this started, we got a handful of people here. Like I always say, if there's only one, I'm going to talk to them. <laughs> All right. So I appreciate everybody that did come in tonight. This is the book club for Food Truck 201, Get Off the Truck. This book is all about helping people to come become better leaders for their business so that they can actually work on the business rather than be the cook or the cashier. And this week we're talking about how to improve the most important part of your business and that's you as a leader. And this is discussing pages 45 through 55. So the first question I got, has anybody ever formally set a goal? And I'm not talking about a New Year's resolution where you say I'm going to lose 15 pounds. I am talking about actually sitting down and writing out a goal, whatever it could be, anything, and done it in a formal setting, whether it be a business setting or uh, a job setting, even at school. So if anybody has, would love to share. I'd love to hear it. You can raise your hand or just unmute yourself and holler out since there's only a handful of people here tonight. And while you guys are thinking, I'll tell you about the first time I had to do a formal goal setting. I was 19 years old, just been hired at uh, the restaurant to be a manager, just got promoted rather. I think I may have been 20, actually, just turned, just turned 20. And one of the things they wanted us to do was to write a formal goal. And it could be on anything. It just had to do with the restaurant. And of course, having never done anything like that, I had to have all the other managers, well, how do you do it? What are you supposed to do? And all the different steps. And no one gave me a really concise answer of one way to do it over another way. And I ended up being really, really confused and not actually being able to accomplish anything that I had set for the goal because I was more worried about the format than it was the actual achievement of the goal. And that's where I find a lot of people get hung up on, you know, what steps does it take to be able to get to that end goal? or they're not specific enough. Okay, so I'll go ahead and jump into the next section then. When I started working, well, go ahead, go ahead, Joanne. Phil, I was I was setting up goals of um, for marketing. Okay. And uh, I, I'm thinking back when I started, um, I wasn't really, you know, I would go on Facebook personally every now and then. Mm -hmm. I wasn't that savvy with it. Instagram, I was not savvy at all with it. Um, so it was all new to me. Right. And then I had my youngest son come over and try to teach me some things. And and uh, I learned from him. And then I set myself some goals to put out two to three media posts a day and um i i have been meeting them more so now and um when i first started it was hard because i didn't know what to say right. um and you know when i when i first developed especially when i developed the page for joanne's eats um they started growing and growing and growing and getting more followers and and i tagged wendy into it a little bit more and she's just like you know make a post about trying to get more followers and um and then once i got comfortable with making posts of when i was going to be open where i was going to be then i started setting goals to go live two or three mm -hmm. times a week and um, and that's a big one for me because I I don't like being recorded, right? You know, so um, and I get tongue tied. <laughs> it's okay, everybody does. So, oh yes, so those have been my goals for my business. That's great. I mean, anybody that that takes the time to sit down and write down a goal is farther ahead than a lot of business owners are. So I'm glad that you took took the time to do it but then you're also it sounds like pretty much achieving the goal as far as your posts and all and, and that's great you'll start to see the benefits on that um 
hopefully soon. I uh, I joined a few minutes late, so sorry about that. Um, it's we're okay. Just getting ready I won't send you <laughs> to, to go the to the next section. Um, so I I I do have a rather large goal. I'm kind of. Okay. I haven't shared it publicly yet. <laughs> a right. couple people in my family know, so um, you know we're still, you know, we're we're working on it. But so first, I want to say my last. Some of you know my last business. I had a uh, balloon decorating business, mm -hmm. and part of that, um, the hard part for me in the beginning of that was believing in myself and believing what I was selling. It was weird to tell people, "Yeah, I'm a balloon decorator." Like it sounds weird, but then when they see the things that you can do. You know, it's, they're like, oh, okay, I get it now. You know, right. whatever you have to constantly post pictures and that kind of thing. And I would always say, oh, I work, I work for this company and, and I, and I have my own business. Like, that's how I would always phrase it. Like, mm -hmm. and then once I changed the way I said things, I said, oh, I own my own business first. And yeah, I do this other thing too. Like if they ask or whatever, but like once right. I started, you know, changing the way I thought about myself and my business, it changed, it helps other people, you know, see me differently, you know? And so now like having that experience with this new business, like, so now like, we're just, you know, I'm just like all in hundred percent, like, oh yeah, I own my own, I own my own ice cream truck. I do this, I do that. But, um, so the goal is we are going to franchise. That's a great goal. Yeah, it's a very big goal. It so um, the Franchise Expo comes to town next week and uh, we'll be there to get, uh, you know, that's our, not our first step. You know, we're already working with our lawyers and everything on trademarking everything. So, yeah. <laughs> and that's fantastic. Let me ask you about the, the expo that's coming. Mm -hmm. Is it franchises that are there basically getting people yes. interested in the franchises? Yes. And then there's also a company, I already spoke with them. Um, there's also a company there that helps you um, create your own franchise. Mm -hmm. And obviously it's way more money than I have right now. Okay. You know, I'm still trying to pay off my business and, you know, but they gave us information, um, you know, cause we're like, we need to be in business at least a year to have at least a year of sales and that kind of thing. Um, and so, but we are going to look at the other franchises too, just to see, how much they're charging to start a franchise and what all is included in that as far as, even as far as like support, you know, from corporate or from whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, so we know what to include in our plan and what the expectation is. And, you know, we have so many questions, right? So like, even if, you know, a business like say McDonald's, right? Even if somebody buys a McDonald's and it fails, well, what happens? Does the, does McDonald's corporation take it over, take over the, you know what I'm saying? Or do they just sell it and close it? Like, so we have a lot of questions, you know, that need to get answered, but yeah, that's, um, hopefully that's how I can pay for my kids college. <laughs> yeah. That's a great goal. I'll answer Thank that you. question on the franchises. Typically the first thing that happens is McDonald's corporation will step in and see if there's a, another franchisee that's close enough by that they could just buy that one and expand their territory. That happens okay. a lot more than people realize because you don't notice a change in the restaurant at all. It still continues to open and operate. The only way that you know that the owners have changed is if you look at the licensing, because uh, it'll have a different name on the license. Um, but that happens all the time. Um, it's very rare that a big company like McDonald's would let one close. Um, right. Because it makes them look bad. You know, yeah. they, they would step in and try to run it. In most cases, there are some that close because it just makes more sense for it to close. You know, it always comes down to what what makes the most sense dollars, most sensible choice dollars and sense wise. Right. But certainly, um, you know, having a lawyer on your side is going to help you a lot. Um, and ask all the questions you can think of to ask when you got all those different people. Yeah, yeah. We're trying. We're trying to come up with a whole list. So, yeah, yeah. we're excited. Good, good, good. All right, so let's talk about personal development then. Now, I appreciate everybody that shared their uh, stories. That's fantastic. Uh, as I was saying, when I worked at uh, RACS, one of the things that they wanted us to do was have a personal development plan. Part of that was setting a goal that I was totally clueless in being able to set. And if I'd had something like this setting in front of me, I'd have done a whole lot better. 
because you, in order for your business to be successful, you have to start by improving yourself and improving your expectations of what you can and can't do. Because until you actually try something, you don't really know what your limits are. You're just afraid of, well, what if I fail? Well, what if you fail? Big deal. Move on. So you're the leader of the business. And that's what you got to get into your mind right now. You own the business. Yes, but you are the leader. You're the one that drives all the decisions. You're the one that drives all your sales and you're the one that sets the example for your staff so if you're going to develop a program to help yourself to get better as a leader first thing you got to do is be completely honest with yourself and do that strengths and weaknesses opportunities and threats analysis you got to focus on yourself your skills and you got to admit your shortcomings i mean that's what it is your strengths your weaknesses any opportunities that you have and any threats that you face. And you can do those in relationship to your business as well. The next step or the next part of this process is to actually set goals. And business folks have been, been exposed to the smart goal setting process. And that's um, something that almost every business of any size I've ever worked for has some type of training related to that. And we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. Then next week, we're going to talk about the other three things that are listed here. Again, you'll have to write an action plan because it's pointless to have a goal if you don't know how you're going to achieve that goal. The action plan helps to break that goal into smaller steps or action points so that you can start to work towards that goal. You got to determine the strategies and resources. What's going to help you to achieve your goal and what do you need to help you achieve that particular goal? Because it's not always as as easy as I'm just going to do social media posts. If you don't understand social media, like Joanne shared, she had to get someone to help her to understand that was a strategy. I need someone to help teach me. If you're going to take the social media step one, one movement farther and start to spend some money, that's a resource. You know, perhaps you're going to do paid ads on social media. So you got to think about what are the strategies and resources. And then the last thing is you got to have a review assessment. You got to look at where you started and where you ended up. And does it make sense that you've made progress? Have you made progress? Did you fall behind? And I recommend this review be scheduled at least quarterly. This is a review of you. This is you looking at what you said you're going to do. And then three months down the road, did you do it? Are you working towards it? Is it improving your business? Because if you don't really assess what you're doing, you don't know if it's working. So you always got to be looking how you can make today a little bit better than yesterday was. All right, so let's talk about the strengths and weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. The book has a whole bunch of different questions to ask, but these are the ones that kind of get your, your thought process going. So when you look at strengths, you think, what are you already good at? Whether you've been in this business for years or you just started last week, what are you good at? And I promise you, you're good at a lot of things. There's so many people that have that defeatist attitude. Well, I'm not really good at anything. I'm shy. I can't talk to people. I'm shy. I am probably the most shy person you'll ever meet but you wouldn't know it to talk to me or to, to watch any of these videos or any of the, the classes that I do. I've gotten over that fear of talking to people. I've gotten over that fear of people are going to forget about me as soon as the phone gets hung up. Or we have school break. I used to be so terrified that no one would remember me from one school year to the next. And that went, that followed me all the way through college. So what are you good at? And I promise you, you're good at a lot of things. What advantages do you have over others? And it could be just a simple advantage. I'm tall. I'm 6'3". So that gives me the reach that shorter people don't have when I go to make food. Being tall also automatically commands a little bit of respect. So I have some advantages that come to me naturally. And then how do I leverage those little bit of advantages I have to gain the things that I need to gain for the business? Then let's get real serious about weaknesses. Everyone has weaknesses. 
what skills do you struggle with? One of the biggest weaknesses I mentioned a few seconds ago is I'm very, very shy. I was also, when I was much, much younger, thought I could remember everything, so I didn't want to write anything down. I had gone all the way through school without having to take notes because I had a really, really good memory. But when you get into business, that doesn't work. You have to write things down. So I had to get over that, that arrogance that I had of, I can remember everything. No, I can't. And it's even worse now because I have so many moving parts going on with different appointments and people I'm talking to. I have to take notes to remind myself of everything. So I have to get over that, that well, I'll remember. And there's so many things that I'll tell myself I can remember and then I'll forget it the next day. So you got to understand what skills do you struggle with and admit it because you got to admit it before you can fix it. And then what holds you back? And again, you got to be very open and honest with yourself. And then you can ask somebody that, that knows you well, a significant other, you know, close friends, close family. You know, just ask them, you know, what's good about me? What's bad about me? And if you can get them talking in an open and honest way, you might hear some things that are hard to hear, but they'll help you be a better person in your business. And that's our ultimate goal is for you to be a better leader. Opportunities. Do you have contacts in your network that could assist you with whatever it is that you want to fix about your business or about your leadership skills? Because there's always somebody that, that can set the kind of example that you're looking for. Can you take advantage of the mistakes of the other food trucks that are making in your area? I visit lots and lots of food trucks. And of course, that's part of what I do now is help food trucks. But even before I was coaching and doing all that kind of thing, my wife and I went to multiple restaurants every week in our area. And we would sit and analyze them. Some of it just became part of our conversation because that's what we do. But we would pay attention to what they were doing well and what they weren't doing well. And the ones that weren't performing well, we would look to see how we could take advantage of their mishaps and create a strength in our particular restaurant. So you're always looking for opportunities. And the opportunity could be so, something as simple as, there's an awesome employee. How do I convince them to come work for me? Then you want to look at the threats, something that could derail your success. And it could be competition. It could be finances. It could be uh, weather patterns. You know, in my particular area, I'm not, I'm in Florida. So everybody knows what's happened in South Florida. I'm not a part of that. I was in the, I live in the panhandle. We didn't even have cloudy weather the day the hurricane came through. But those kind of things could derail somebody that's always in the back of our minds. Um, you know, there's been years when we've had multiple hurricanes in our area and some severe hurricanes. When Hurricane Opal came through, and that was about 20 some years ago, that particular uh, hurricane actually followed a hurricane that had come through about two weeks earlier, and they actually made landfall in the same place, which is unusual. Hurricane Aaron was a much weaker hurricane, but Opal was significantly stronger. So you have to have those kind of things. What could derail the success? I'm sure you notice on the group, a lot of people are asking, what should I do about my trailer? Because I live in the hurricane's path. You have to have those plans made out. So that when they do happen, you know what to do. And it's no problem. You also got to think about, again, the finances. You know, are you looking at rising food costs and how do I compensate for that? Am I going to raise my own prices? Do I feel like my price is already too high as it is? And then the last question there, is there a risk of your weakness becoming threats to your own success? This is one of the things that a lot of psychologists refer to as self-sabotage, where you're doing really, really good in some certain area and you continue to kind of chip away at that because your mind hasn't accepted that you should be successful. So you look for the, the other shoe to fall, basically. And you do things to 
hurt yourself. For example, if you uh, have a menu that you cook to perfection, everything's awesome, and your business is going really, really well, and then you get worried about, well, what if I lose sales? I'll need, I'll add another food product. And then, oh, it's not enough. I need to add another one. And then you add another one. And then pretty soon, all of those new products create such a burden on your productivity in the food truck that your sales start to go down. And you think, okay, it's, I need to add one more item. That'll bring them back up. And I see this very frequently. Adding new products doesn't bring sales. It typically cannibalizes the sales you already have. The only thing that adding a new product should do is defeat menu fatigue. And that's when you sell the same thing in very similar food lines across your whole menu and the people are getting tired of it. Then you have to in interject something new to give them reason to continue coming back to your business. It breaks up that menu fatigue. So when they get tired of that new product, you drop it, it goes away, and they fall back into your old menu because now they haven't had it as frequently. That's why restaurants do limited time only. That's why the McRib comes back every year. That's why you'll see Burger King and all the other restaurants add something seasonal. It breaks the menu fatigue. It creates some excitement, gets people coming in, try the new product, and they intend on that product going away. So you got to understand pertaining to you as a person, what your strengths, what your weaknesses, what opportunities you have to improve and what threats you might be facing. And the book does list a whole bunch of other questions to ask yourself to kind of get some clarity there. So the next section of the book talks about the smartest goal setting. Now I mentioned when I first started setting goals and I was completely and utterly confused. My company, it was Rack's Restaurants, they use the SMART method, which is specific, measurable, achievable. It's got to, you got to list resources and it's time bound. And that's what they did for everybody. But it lacks a couple of things. And I noticed that the more that I would set goals, and I sometimes I'd hit them, sometimes I wouldn't. Sometimes I'd blow them away. Sometimes it was, they were, you know, 10,000 miles down the road, I was never going to hit them. But when I started really thinking about what else I needed, those last three things that I added, ethical, sharing it, and then the temptation, those kind of brought it into a more cohesive package for me personally. So let's talk about all of them. Specific means that you're going to set a specific goal. I am going to raise sales. That's a specific goal because it says I, me, am going to do something, raise sales, okay? That's specific, but it doesn't meet the measurable criteria because raising sales could be $1, okay? Yes, I raise sales, that's awesome, but that doesn't help you as a business to have one more dollar's worth of sales. So it's gotta be measurable. So you're thinking if you're gonna be raising sales, I will raise sales by either a dollar amount or a percentage, whichever one makes the most sense to you, and then you're going to put a deadline to it where it says time bound down there. I'm kind of skipping ahead a little. But it's the specific is who's going to do it, what they're going to do, and then the thing they're going to do in measurable numbers, in measurable terminology, so that you know that there's a definitive, yes, it happened, or no, it didn't happen. And then it's got to have that time bound on it so that puts you under a deadline. It makes you want to get it done. Then skipping down to Achievability, is it realistic for Joanne to say, I'm going to do a million dollars a year in sales on my hot dog cart? As wonderful as that sounds, it's not possible. No matter how good you are, the storage capacity of a hot dog cart and its cooking capacity will not sustain a million dollars a year in sales. That requires you to do 19,630, I'm sorry, 19,000. $660 per week or almost $3,000 a day from a hot dog cart on average. And that's super, super hard to do. So the goal has to be achievable. 
then you got to list the resources it's going to take. Some goals have minimal resources. I'm going to spend a few dollars on Facebook ads, that kind of thing. But you want to list those resources. And then the resource also may go to you getting education. If you want to learn how to do taxes, obviously you're going to have to get education. Whatever your goal is, it's either going to have a money resource or it's going to need some type of educational resource. And you need to list those so you can get those uh, in a timely manner so you can still achieve the time bound that you have for that goal. Then the three things that I added, the goal has to be ethical. It can't conflict with your internal uh, morality, whatever that is. You guys know how I am with the group. So when you set a goal, it has to not break one of your own internal rules. Because if it does, then you're left feeling like, man, if I achieve this goal, I'm hurting something internally. So now you're not motivated to hit that particular goal. So if you get to the ethical part and it, it makes it questionable for you, then you need to rewrite that goal so that now it falls back in with your personal ethics and your personal morality, whatever that is. So once you've got those things lined up, then you want to share it. This is what Lori was talking about. Sharing a goal with the right people is one thing to help you accomplish the goal. You don't want to share it with people that are going to put you down and say, you'll never hit that. There's no way. Nobody does that. It's impossible. Just give it up. You don't want to share it with those kind of people. And that could be your family. You want to share it with people that are going to push you in the right direction. That are going to say, yes, you absolutely can do that. But you also want to share it with people that can help you achieve that goal and hold you accountable. Not that they'll go out and do the work for you, but they'll talk to you and say, how's it going, Lori? Are you hitting the goal? Are you getting closer to it? You know, do you need to talk about it? So you're going to share it with people that are going to help keep you motivated and help keep you accountable to your own goal. Because if you keep that goal under the bushel where no one can see it, and if you don't hit it, well, it's okay because nobody really knew about it. But if you share the goal, you'll have somebody to help you celebrate it if you do hit it, and you'll have somebody to help you push towards it when things get rocky. And sometimes they do get rocky. And then the last thing was the most important one to me, and that's the temptation. And think of that not as a negative temptation, but a positive temptation. For me, when I was setting those goals way back when I was 19 and 20 years old, the only goal or the only motivation anybody in the company would give me was when you do this, you'll get a raise. When you do this, you'll get a promotion. And it's like, well, why? Yeah, I needed to know the why. So the temptation is what do I get out of this goal? Once I achieve it, what do I get personally? Yeah, as the business owner, what am I going to get? And then it doesn't matter what that is. You know, I'm going to make more profit. I'm going to, you know, you know, buy a new car, whatever. It is the temptation that speaks to you and pushes you to, to achieve that goal. Because if it doesn't push you to achieve the goal, then it's not really a temptation. It's not that that carrot that's being dangled in front of you. And that's what achieving a goal has to be because it moves your business forward. So have that. Again, that little bit of temptation. And it can be broken down into steps if you need to. So it's not like I'm, if we take that exaggeration I did a few minutes ago, I'm going to do a million dollars on my hot dog cart. It's not possible, but what if it was? How could I go about doing that? Okay, maybe I need to buy three hot dog carts or four hot dog carts. Actually, it would take five. Because I know for a fact you can do 200000 off a hot dog cart. So if you had five hot dog carts, then all of a sudden the business could potentially do a million dollars. And how do we get those five carts aligned so they can pull in that 200000 that they would need to do? And then you get excited about it. Because now you start to think of all the possibilities, the wheels get turning. But the temptation's got to be there. Sometimes for me, the temptation was just doing something no one else has ever done. 
because I like being able to say I did something no one else did. But those are the, the steps to setting a goal. Specific, measurable, achievable. Got to know the resources. Got to have a time. Got to have some deadline. It's got to be ethical to your, your internal system. You got to share it so that people help hold you accountable and help push you towards the goal. And there's got to be some temptation. There's got to be something you get out of that goal. Otherwise, you just won't care. If you don't have to achieve the goal, no big deal. All right, so we're going to do questions and answers here in just a second. Be patient with yourself. This is what Stephen Covey says. Self-growth is tender. It's holy ground. There's no greater investment. And that really is no greater investment than in yourself. And I actually, I had a different one up there. I think I changed the wrong slide. That one's actually in the book, that particular quote. But I had another one up there too. I wonder where I put it. There it is. This is what I want you, wanted to share with you guys in that particular section before we start the question and answer. A dream, when it's written down with a date, becomes a goal. A goal broken down into steps becomes a plan. A plan backed by action makes your dreams a reality. And that's all we're doing with, with setting goals. Making a plan, taking some action, and making those goals. 